All right, gang, let's do this. You asked, we listened by popular demand. Maybe the breakout star of the Winnipeg Jets dads and mentors trip. Um, the father of uh, a Vesna Trophy winning goaltender leading the way for the Winnipeg Jets. Chuck Hellebuck joins us now. Uh, Chuck, thanks so much for doing this and welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Oh, thanks for inviting me. This is a, this is a thrill. I watch you guys all the time. And just to be on here is a is an honor. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. That's a nice of you to say. I got to tell you, a lot of people uh, became fans of uh, your social media stream. And we'll kind of talk about some of the fun tweets. But overall, man, the team is playing so well. I can't think of a better time to get the dads and mentors together for a trip. It, it sure seemed like you guys had a great time on the road last weekend. Uh, it, it was great. Um, I'm glad it went well because if it didn't, we'd be kicked out, right? So, uh, but no, it was great. It's it. They treat us so well, and uh, it's great to be part of it. And the, the the guys get along so great, and the dads are all a lot of fun to hang with. It, it was just a great time. You know, I, I mean, from uh, uh, and we'll kind of talk about being a hockey parent, particularly a goalie parent, in a middle in, in a minute, but. Um, bringing the guys all together. Did you know uh, any of the other dads uh, beforehand or the folks there? Was it sort of everyone met each other and then became a big uh, crew for the next four days? Uh, yeah, well, it's changed so much over the years. This, this was my third dad trip, and Brad Shifley, that was his fourth. So Brad and I knew each other really well. Um, but everyone else was kind of, you know, didn't know him as well. Or, you know, we'd see him in the family lounge occasionally at games. But uh, to have them all together, there's a lot of new dads and a lot of new players. And it, it was it was fun to, to sit and hear their stories and talk to everybody. It was it was it was great. A uh, few things are more fun right now for people around here. And I'm sure you as well than watching the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, not only did you get to, you know, experience an incredible time, uh, you know, with your friends and sons. But this team just keeps on winning night in and night out. And they did it three times for you guys on the road. Yeah, it's it's they're just clicking, you know, and, and there's you can't you, you watch and you go, there isn't really you know one line. It's four lines and it's hard to tell which one's on the ice because they're they play so strong and so equally and, and back check and, and play defensively. It's it's just it's a joy to watch. I, I've got to ask you whether you're on dad's trip or, you know, you're at another time during the season when you get the opportunity to, to do it. What's it like watching your son play goaltender in the National Hockey League? It's, you know, I tell everybody it's really a not a lot different than what everyone else sees. I just get a front row seat. You know, it's, I get to behind the scenes comments. I get to, you know, uh, hear about it after the game. You know, we, we don't, I don't dive into his details and and uh it's his business it's his job i'm not going to try to interfere you know i'm not gonna i don't know nothing about playing goalie so um so it's it's but i love watching him chase his dream and it's a dream he's had from the time he was like five years old he told me he wanted to be a goalie and and to see him achieve that is just it's a great feeling it's i, I don't even know how to describe it it's just a great feeling you know what? Your uh, Jet fans right now have a great feeling watching what he and his teammates are doing uh, night in, night out. I want to get into a little bit more about Connor's uh, background and his path here in a second. Um, but as far as the, the trip goes over the course of the weekend, I mean, I think clearly the three games were highlights, especially that last one in Arizona. I think they played so much hockey. People were wondering, man, can they do it again with the schedule? And I mean, they just blew their doors off. But uh, from your perspective, along with the other fellows on the trip, I mean, uh, what were the highlights for you guys that stood out? Um, oh, God. Uh, it just, I, I honestly, I think it's just being a part of it, uh, being that close to it, uh, riding in the plane. With it. The, the thing is that the tweets that I, that I put out, I started it as really just to let my YouTube channel, my followers know that, hey, I'm not going to be putting up content you know, this is why I get to go on this trip because a lot of them know I'm Connor's dad. And uh, but as, as I'm going, you know, you 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 go on a bus to the plane, and a plane to a bus, and a bus to the airport, and or, or to the to the hotel, and you get in late, and then they get up early and they do their thing, and and then you, you take the bus to the rink and play the game, and then a bus to the air. It's just it's just this constant. And you get to air, you know, get to the room at two a.m. and it's a grind. It, it's a grind. I, I know they're paid well, but it, it's a it's a grind, and and that's what I think as fathers we all 
learn and and share in, in that experience and and then we don't have to play the game yet we come out of it exhausted you know so um that's and that's really what the tweets kind of became is is uh i said well you know there's a story here and you know like any video or anything you're trying to tell a story and that that's kind of what the story was i was trying to tell you is is look what goes on behind the scenes it's it's uh you know the the travel and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's I just walked into my hotel room, took a picture, and fell out, fell into a strange it, bed for the third, fourth night. <laughs> it it is, I mean, it is quite a, an operation. And not only do you see what you know your sons and the players are doing, but um, there's a lot of other people that have a hand in all of that and getting from oh. point A to point B. I mean, you think about the trainers, the equipment guys. I mean, um, it's pretty interesting if you have the opportunity to see everything that goes into NHL hockey from the guys that the average fan has no idea who they are or what they do. It's it's such an operation. Uh, like you said, that the trainers and equipment guys, and you get to see them, talk to them, but they're so busy. They are always going, always working. Uh, you know, the, Krev, who organizes it, the whole thing, just does a fantastic job. And um, it's... It's just such an operation and, and you just, you feel part of it. And so, but you don't want to interfere. You don't want to get in the way, but it, uh, it's, it's really a lot that these, this whole team, I, by that, I mean, everybody goes through, um, going from spot to spot and, uh, it's just a great experience. It, it really is a great experience. I'm glad I've, I've been able to do it now more than more than once. Like Connor told me when I was invited, he says, Dad, you want to do it again? I said, sure. He goes, you're going to be the old timer now because you, you've done this more than anybody else other than Shifley. You know? So it, it was Veteran. cool. Well, uh, kind of funny you mentioned Shifley and yourself. Uh, uh, here's to many more father's trips uh, with the Winnipeg Jets in the future with uh, your son signing those identical deals with the Thanksgiving Day gift. If you are new, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. We're here every day, 1 o'clock on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and uh, if you want to get the audio version, if you're not able to join us on YouTube, just search Winnipeg Sports Talk wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Follow or subscribe there, and uh, we'll have the fresh content coming in around 3.30 every day as soon as we uh, finish the show, just in time for your drive home if you're uh, rocking a 9 to 5. Um, Chuck Hellebuck's with us, and uh, I'm sure most of you have already seen these tweets and whatnot, but make sure to check out at Chuck Hellebuck on Twitter. And we'll talk a little bit later on about um, his YouTube channel and presence, which is um, particularly interesting to guys like us that are in this space, uh, in this space right now. Um, but Chuck, uh, overall, uh, Connor, uh, you know, we've been covering this team since they came back and literally since he started as an NHL goaltender and longtime listeners, you know, he is uh has always been my favorite person to listen to because, I mean, this is not to get on anyone else, but, you know, a lot of times, sometimes hockey players come with pretty standard cliches. He is as as thoughtful and as honest, frankly, as any player that we've had here for a long time. Um, he And goalies are, are different to begin with, and I think you would uh, agree on that. But take us back. I mean, you mentioned that he said he wanted to be a goaltender like when he was around five. Um how did he get into hockey? How big was hockey as part of uh, your his and his uh, siblings growing up? And um, give us a little idea about his path because it's a, it is a road less traveled. I think we can <laughs> safely say when it comes to becoming a Vesna Trophy winner. Yeah, I was probably more of a hindrance than a help along the way. But uh, uh, his uh, my nephew uh, would have a birthday party every year. And we'd play street mm-hmm. hockey, and he he played he played ice hockey. So the boys grew up watching watching us play. I mean, the adults out there and with kids, you know, we'd, we'd play this once a year roller hockey game. It was so much fun. And then eventually they got old enough that they could play. And we would play on roller blades and play on shoes, you know, but it was, uh, uh, but they started playing. So his uh, his older brother was uh, nat- just a natural skater, just phenomenal uh, shot and stick handler and everything. So I got him involved in roller hockey in the local YMCA and, and Connor would watch and he told, told me, he says, dad, when I get to play, I want to be goalie. And, and they would just, they would shoot on, they to shoot on each other. Chris would do breakaways on Connor and they, they would just do this back and forth. And then they include me and we just, um, you get a point for a goal, you get a point for a stop, you know, and it was, it was back and forth, back and forth. And, and they did that. And then they played roller hockey and had a ton of success. And people said, you know, you need to take these kids dice and, like I can't afford that, you know, but find a way. And uh, so they did house hockey for a number of years. Uh, travel teams would call and I'm like, I, I can't split these kids up and, you know, do this stuff. And uh, But we eventually, <laughs> I had to because uh, 
they, they'd gone to States a couple times and, um, fortunately silver medal both times, but, uh, uh, and they went to travel and uh, just kept achieving. Like, how know? old was he when he, when, he, I mean, this is a fascinating story, starting with roller hockey, then going to essentially like a fun house league to play with your brother to playing at a much more competitive level. Like, oh, what time did that transition happen for Connor? Um, I mean, let's see. The, the, the roller started at five by about seven years old. I think we started transition to ice. Um, and then uh, I think around 10 years old maybe 11 he had to, it, then it had to go to travel because house just wasn't doing it anymore um and then he played travel both of them played travel which made it tougher because they were on separate teams at that point um and then uh and then to high school um finally he just went from there to high school as a freshman uh, he made the varsity team as a goalie and uh and then they played together again on the high school team and uh that must have been of, awesome for you. Awesome. Just incredible. I, I did some of my best memories. And um, every step of the way, it's been you know, like, you know, I coached. I was his goalie coach early on, defensive coach. That coach put me in charge of that because no one no one understand. Most coaches don't understand goaltending. Not to say I'm no expert, but most of them don't understand goaltending. So he put me in charge of that and we worked with him. But, uh, um you know, it took me about five minutes to teach him what I knew about goaltending, and then he, he, he figured it out himself. That's been his path. And, uh, you know, I'd offer him, hey, let's go to this camp. He'd watch the camps. And he goes, no, Dad, no, they're just going to change my game. That No, don't waste your money on that. Uh, he knew. He knew what he wanted. He would study it on his own. He'd figure it out on his own. Um, it's one story I told her is we're in the, we're in the uh, hockey shop and he's over looking at player sticks. He's looking at which two piece blades were new and he's looking at the twist of the blade. I go, what are you doing there? Why don't you go look at the goalie sticks? He goes and he points it at me. He says, Dad, look at this stick. Look at this blade. It's twisted. He says, where do you think that puck's going if they shoot? Now, he's about 10 years old maybe at this point, maybe maybe 11. And I go, well, unless they screw up the shot, it's going up. He goes, exactly. I want to know every one of these blades. I want to remember every one of these blades. So when I see that blade, I know exactly where the puck's going. As I just that's went, so okay, cool. kid, do what you want to do. Because that's he's just studied the game. That's just the way he was and the way he is. He still does it. He still does it. So. Um, Chuck, so he's playing high school with his brother, which um, you know was a dream, I'm sure, for you and the family. Then he goes to Odessa, Texas. <clears throat> I can't imagine a bigger difference than playing at home with your brother to be playing in Texas. How did all that happen? What was it like for you as a dad? Nerve-wracking. I, I had no idea how this worked. Um, they, his older brother went to a few camps, you know, uh, juniors camps, did pretty well. Connor would tag along, but, um, you know, he, he got to a few camps. But, but we had no idea how it worked. And then uh, there's uh, one of the coaches, high school coaches, was actually a USHL scout, and he, he set up a tryout out in uh, Omaha. I forget the team. But anyway, we had to fly out there, drive out, get there, and, and, and uh, we thought this, you know, opportunity and the goalie coach wasn't even there goalie coach was in wisconsin the head coach really like almost showed no interest and uh so they just let him practice and so i'm like okay this is a high school kid against ushl players let's see let's see what he's got and he was stoning them he was mad because they didn't take it serious so he was just gonna i'm gonna show you and he was just stoning these kids and uh, it ended up him in the back the, the starting goalie didn't want anything to do with it any the backup goalie and and, and him were uh going this one-on-one -on -one against the players, and they're slapping their sticks, getting frustrated. They can't be this high school kid. And he just – he got off that ice, and he said, Dad, let's go. Let's go. Let's, they're not taking me serious. Let's go. And uh, But it was probably the best thing that could have happened because then he went to other camps knowing that he had the ability to 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 play in this – play at this level, but he was, had to show them. And, uh, and he didn't get drafted, and that put a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And then when he got the call to, you know, come out to the, the training camp for Odessa, which was actually in Minnesota. It was a team that moved from Minnesota down to Odessa. And uh, he drove the 13 hours, gave him the family car. He so you got a good car, and, and uh, do what you can do, kid. And he went out there on the ice the first time, and uh, Joe Clark, who was the – the coach, or the the, uh, the general manager and the goalie coach, he pulled him off the ice like after the first day. He said, we should have drafted you, kid. Just just go. He went fishing. He brought his fishing pole. He went fishing because he said, you're on the team. We, we were going to work with other kids. We've seen enough. Um, so he made the team right there. And then uh, the 10 shipped him off to a host family in Texas. I had no idea. It was 
you know, where this is going to go. You're nervous for your kid, but he's chasing his dream. He was third goalie going down there. And then the first goalie got into some trouble and he was sent home. And the second goalie played, I think, the first two games. By the third game, Connor took over and never looked back. You know, he is um... – I'm still thinking about that story you were talking about as a 10 year old, like evaluating all the sticks. Um, he is as cerebral as a player as we've had, but also incredibly driven, obviously got drafted by the jets out of Odessa. But uh, at what point as a dad, did you think that this dream of <clears throat> playing goaltender for a living, um, you know, might be coming true? I mean, listen on, you know, at what point this went from something you really liked to do to something that was incredible focus to something that not only could be a career, but he could be one of the best in the world. Uh, I, I think it really, for me, it hit in the AHL. I mean, I, what he did in college was phenomenal. Um, and it, and I'm, my goal was for both the kids. I said, if you can, you know, help get a college degree, you know, played partially, it, that's a success. So anything beyond that was a bonus. But uh, when it was a tough call to, to leave college early uh, for me, more for me than him, he knew. But when he went to AHL, and uh, I forget who the other goalie that, that they just brought in, there was um, played for Colorado. Sorry, I'm forgetting the name, but he outplayed him and and took over that team. And uh, I could see his positioning, how he was reading the puck, how he was uh, reading things the same way he always did. And I said, this, he's he's got it, you know. If this is the you know AHL, if this is a professional, he's. He's not going to be here long. That's when I started to really believe what he'd been telling me for you know years. I'm going to make it. Um, that's when I really it, you worry about your kids. You know you over worry about your kids. But at that point, I was like, I don't have to worry anymore. He's he's going to find a way. Well, he's he's not only found a way, but he's been the backbone of um, this team and organization really on the ice for the better part of the last uh, six seven years. Um, this was a big year and a big off season and uh, a huge decision. Um, what was it like for, uh, for you to be, um, you know, I'm sure talking to him about, um, what's going to happen and, uh, how did it all go over when uh, he and his teammate, Mark Scheifele, both, uh, re up to, uh, try and win a Stanley cup here in Winnipeg with a uh, seven more years after this season. Yeah. Um, business decisions like that. I, I do try to stay out of it. I, I go back to the college when it was trying to decide whether to leave early and I, I, you know, I didn't play him at AAA, you know, so he didn't get really discovered. And so I kind of hurt him and, and, uh, you know, maybe my, my advice, you know, as far as leaving college early or not, man, that been the best sometimes. And, uh, so, so I've learned just, just let, let the professionals, you know, his, his, his agent Ray is great, uh, work it through. You know, I get bits and pieces, you know, you always hope they're closer to home so I can see my grandkids more often and stuff. Um, but Winnipeg is just, uh, it's been a great home and, and, and they treated us so well. It was, it was just, I was always in the running, you know, always. And, uh, um, and they just worked it out and then to, to get the, uh, the, the offer that he did and then it tied in with, with Shifley's. We love, love the Shifley. We love the Shifley's are great people and Mark's a great kid. And it's just, it was, it was kind of, you could see it was coming, you know, it's just, uh, but when he, he made the decision and it was, I knew he knew it was his decision and it was the right decision for him and his family. And hasn't looked back. Look, what always been playing since it's just been, uh, that's his home and he's, and he wants to bring a cup home. You know, Chuck, what I think from a Jets fan's perspective and people that are listening to this right now are probably even extra excited in that Connor seemingly from his entire life has um, decided on things, has done everything he can to achieve them and has in a lot of ways manifested them into existence. And mm -hmm. we've all known what the biggest decision making part of what was happening this summer was, is winning a Stanley cup. And he, said as much he will win a stanley cup and got to tell you what the, the way he and his teammates are playing right now uh looks like a good decision and uh holy smokes are they uh they running right now uh, i do one more question though about him kind of growing up um because as i said he's very interesting very cerebral and you know we'll get into kind of what you're doing on youtube with electronics and stuff like that when you think of him as a young uh, a boy turning into a man what were what are the qualities of him that maybe have created this incredible goaltender. I mean, um, you know, whether it's gifts, the talents that he has, or just qualities that he has, like um, 
asking questions and figuring things out. He seems to think the game in a very different way than most of the other hockey players we've talked to. I can tell you that much. Yeah, I, I think really it, deep down it just comes down to uh, the belief system that you can, you know, if you, uh, that he mentions the book or movie, The Secret. I brought that home to the kids because the idea, if you have a goal and you you want to achieve it, you can achieve it. You know, it's 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 not going to be easy. It's not guaranteed, but if you want it, you can achieve it. His his you know his brother, great businessman, developed great business, and now he's going after you know trying to become a professional fisherman. Uh, his sister's successful, you know, engineer. Um, but but from a young age, he he said he wanted to be a goalie, and and I told both the kids have a backup plan, and he says, Dad, I don't, I don't have one. I said, it's fine. You know, it takes time to discover it. He goes, no, I don't want one. It's going to distract me. I'm going to go until I make it. And and that's the way he was in everything he wanted to do. You know, even in high school, you know, there were parties to go to. If, if there was sticks and pucks where he could go practice, he was going to sticks and pucks. You know, it was hockey came first. That just, that's the way it was. They play pond hockey. That came first. You know, it just, um, you know, did, did fine in school. You know, he got good grades and everything. He knew he had to, you know, get that done. But, um it just was he knew what he wanted and he was going to achieve it and that's that's really we encourage that but his mom and i encourage that you know be good but uh you know to everything be good to people and everything else but but only you can determine your future you know and and and, uh make the right decisions make the right choices and make it work I've said for a long time, he seems like the most genuinely, authentically confident person I've ever talked to in my life. What, when did you notice that? And where does that confidence come from? Oh God. It's, I think it's kind of always been there. Um, I mean, everyone goes through him. Well, he talks about the mental health stuff that he, you know, he's got the book out and, and, uh, he, he referenced how he was raised, you know, just suck it up and move on. And, and, and yeah, that's, you know, kind of my fault in that respect too it's like you know you're gonna get beat up so stand up and keep going you know because it's what you got to do but but sometimes you do need that help and that's what he's you know he's discovered there too and along the way i think he got that through you know through various means talking to his mom and sometimes talking to me but talking to coaches or whatever and and uh uh but to help him focus and and he's just developed that confidence not overconfidence but that confidence that belief that you can achieve what you believe. And and he's even said about, you know, the, the hockey, he says it's the idea of believing that you can win. He says, even if you're losing, he says, if you start thinking about losing and how you can do this, he's going to start gripping the t- skit, uh, stick tighter. You're going to be doing things, overdo stuff, he says, and, and probably make things worse. He says, you got to think positive. You got to think w- like a winner and then you'll start winning. And, and that's, that's what drives him. That's his, if you talk to him now, he'd tell you that. Chuck Hellebuck, our guest on Winnipeg Sports Talk. I could pick your brain about Connor's background for hours right now. Um, But before we go, I have to ask you about uh, a side that a lot of Jet fans sort of discovered over the course of the past week, your presence on social media. Not necessarily, you know, the fun tweets about what you and the dads are going through, but your YouTube channel. I can tell you, we sort of got pushed into this area through circumstance three years ago, and we've been growing it, and... We kind of pull up this YouTube channel. I'm like, he's pushing 300,000 subs and look at all this. I, tell us a little bit about uh, the Filament Friday. And uh, uh, full disclosure, folks, I did a deep dive on this channel last night. I feel like I actually know about 3D printing right now. Great place to start for it. But um, fill us in on what you're doing on the internet, the YouTube channel, and uh, um, the passion for electronics. Yeah, that's my pa- that's been my passion since I was a kid, you know, and um, just doing electronics. I've been doing it for almost 50 years now, but, uh, uh, and, and it's part of my main job, but, but I wrote, I've written 10 books on electronics. Um, and then I did hundreds of articles from magazines and then that tried started to die off. So you, everyone's going to YouTube as, okay, let's try this YouTube stuff. And, uh, you know, my early videos were horrible, but I was trying to do electronics, but electronics, also some CNC, you know, mill your own boards and then 3D prints, print your own box and brackets. But the 3D printing just took off. And I'm like, okay, ride the wave, you know, it's fun. And uh, and that's what I've been doing now for 10 years is just helping people get started with 3D printing. Uh, home 3D printers came out about 12 years ago. I've been doing this for 10. And uh, just the whole thing was just about teaching people how to have fun doing the things that I like to do. You know, it's uh, 3D printing, print whatever you want, you know, it's 
um, it's just been a lot of fun and, and, uh, it just, it kind of grew. Um, I know when COVID hit, a lot of people bought 3d printers to print the personal protection stuff. And I already had a series of videos on the printers that most were buying. I focused on the low cost printers and, uh, it just took off from there because everyone needed help and they were coming to my videos and it's really just exploded since then. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been a labor of love. It's, uh. I've been able to take my hobby and expand on it and share it with uh, with an audience. It, you know, as impressive as the information in it, I have to admit, Michael and I were talking behind the scenes. The production in it's really neat, and you do that all yourself from an iPad. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. People are shocked by that. It's like, what camera do you use? And it's like, well, I started out just using an iPad, and I learned iMovie on the iPad for the editing. It's so easy because I could. I don't have a lot of time. I still have a day job, you know. So it's a sideline and. And uh, so I can edit it from anywhere. I can sit in the couch and <laughs> edit. And uh, I do have a separate microphone, you know, that so I get good sound quality. But uh, yeah, I do it all from from the from the iPad. And I've had people tell me you need to get a better camera, and I'll get a better camera when my production, you know, falters. And you you let me know. And so far, it's <laughs> everyone seems to like it. So I keep doing it. Chuck, if people are interested to find out more, to check out the channel and find more about electronics and 3D printing at Filament Friday, fill people in on uh, where they can uh, find everything you're doing out there. Yeah, the easiest way is just go to filamentfriday.com. It'll take you right to the YouTube channel. And then uh, this, you can find more information there. Watch one of the videos. There's links in, in any of the video will take you to um, yeah, other websites and stuff. But just filamentfriday.com will take you there. And if you're interested in the 3D printing, I do some electronics on there. And um, But, you know, and you, and if you don't like my stuff, if you like get into, you know, there's other channels out there. But just, but uh, yeah, filamentfriday.com is, is, is my spot. It's my little niche. And uh, maybe I'll get a few more people started in 3D printing. <laughs> well, check it out, everybody. And, I mean, you kind of mentioned this right at the start, but I mean, this has really grown. I mean, as they say, you're at 292,000 subscribers, which is very significant. Um, how many of them know, or did you get many uh, uh, emails like, wait a second, is uh, your goalie the, the guy for the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, it's 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 every year I get some that have been watching for a while, and then they like, wait, are you related? You know, it's like, yeah, it's my son. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And and so, yeah, it's every year. But then there's there's some that have been following me for years and know, you know, and they just now they become Jet fans. And <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's in the it's a pretty, you know, big community. There's there's about 3D printing conferences that we all go to. And you know, it's basically worldwide. There's, there's people around the world I talk to um, that were all into this this hobby and and. Uh, a lot of them know. Some of them don't even, you know, follow hockey and know, you know. But uh, yeah, there's, there's that definitely that connection um, that is across. You know, there's definitely across there. Some are hockey fans, some aren't, but they, they follow it all. But yeah, every once in a while, I'll get a comment. It's like, oh my god, I've been watching you for years. I didn't even know you're related. Uh, Chuck, this has been so much fun having you on the program. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I know it very well received by the fans. All the tweets were people were hoping we could get you on and uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing on the Internet, but mostly about uh, a certain offspring of yours that's won a Vesna trophy and uh, is poised to uh, even greater heights along with his teammates this season. Uh, what a great first half this year it's been. And uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as we are right now. Thanks again for doing this and uh, all the best on the channel. And uh, let's catch up again soon sometime. That was great. We'll catch up when we uh, bring home the cup. How about that? 